Hello, welcome to Spread Book Joy. Today I want to talk to you about The Secret of Haven Point by Lizette Orton. If you're new to the channel, I'm Jack. I'm a primary school teacher who shares great books for children for home or school, but I also like to talk about my own reading on this channel. So if you're new, welcome. If you're not new, welcome back. So today I'm going to talk to you about The Secrets of Haven Point by Lizette Orton, which is a middle grade book which was released um, in the last couple of months. And I originally reviewed this book for Just Imagine, which is a website that does critical reviews of children's literature for teachers and parents. So I'd recommend going there if you want some fantastic reviews by experienced educators. I'll leave a link in the description box below to the website where the original review is posted. So on Haven Point, a lighthouse is a sanctuary for the Recklings, which is a group of children who have drifted to this sanctuary um, and they've all got various disabilities of one kind or another, uh, visible and hidden disabilities as well. So the children are trying to escape cruelty and rejection from society and they're taken in by the captain and a group of mermaids whose magic manages to keep Haven Point a secret and keep it hidden from the rest of the world. And our main character, Alpha Lux, was washed up there as a baby in a soapbox. There are various disabilities represented within the secret of Haven Point. So Alpha uh, was um, injured in a fire as a baby and so she has visible scarring and one eye. Badger, who is Alpha's best friend, uh, is blind. The captain has severe social anxiety and, and finds it really difficult to be around people and their other friend uh, Badger and Alpha's other friend Jeremiah is a wheelchair user. Um, so there's a real range of representation within this book. So the magical boundary around Haven Point protects anyone who has a disability, visible or otherwise, uh, from society and it protects them from feeling um, othered and abused or rejected by an ableist society. So diversity and difference are celebrated on Haven Point and each character's unique abilities uh, is celebrated. So um, I felt that was a really nice strong point of the book. So there's a lot of strong found family and acceptance and safety um, themes running throughout the book. So they call themselves the Recklings because they survive by scavenging and they make or um, find anything they can to survive. They also take part in what they call wreckings, which sounded really horrific to me at first, but basically what they do is they um, steal from passing ships, but they only steal from ships where, they don't wreck the ships either, they just, that's what they call them. And they only steal from ships which are, as the captain says, run by dodgy companies. So I'm assuming they mean ethically questionable companies. Um, and they only steal what they need. They don't take things for profit, they don't take things that they don't need, they only steal what they need. Um, so the, ma the mermaid's magic helps them with that. So when there's a, um, a particularly bright moonlit night where they can see by, they, um, the mermaids will sing and they'll put this, the crew of the ships to sleep and then the recklings will steal on board and uh, they'll take what they need. So they live a kind of wild and free life and existence, very much kind of like Lost Boys vibes off of it. And they, um, they all take care of each other and they enjoy their kind of peace and their solitude away from a world that has been cruel to them or rejected them in some way. And then one night, Alpha spots like a twinkling light in the distance and goes to investigate and discovers that they might not be as safe from outside interference as they thought. So that's kind of the premise of the book. So I'm not gonna go into any further details. There's no spoilers there really, um, but yeah, it was very delightful. It's a really kind of magical story. The mermaids are pretty cool. They're not like Disney mermaids. They're wild creatures of the sea. They've got sharp teeth and they're vicious and they have their own politics, um, but they also have a relationship with the captain and particularly one has a relationship with Alpha. Um, so yeah, the mermaids were really quite cool in this book. Language is extremely important on Haven Point. Lizette Orton does an amazing job of integrating this idea that using language, the correct language and the inclusive terms that we need to, we should all try, try our best to learn and use is really important to, in order to challenge sort of ableist attitudes. And I think one of the key messages as well, when at the end of the book is whether they should be hiding themselves away or whether they should be out there in society, challenging these attitudes and um, sort of advocating for change. So yeah, I thought there was really interesting themes. Other things in explored include bullying um, and whether teasing can be bullying and things like that. I'd recommend this book for children in year four or above, but ideally year five or six. So anyone from the age of eight or nine, but ideally anyone from sort of nine, 10 and above. I think that's probably the best age limit, I think, for it for me, given certain content, which I'll talk to you about in a second. It provides a fabulous stimulus for discussion 
section on themes like disability and friendship and bullying and um, language and challenging language and assumptions about people. And also the importance of language and how we use it in relation to other people. Hidden disabilities and mental health are referenced sensitively throughout the book. There is also LGBTQ plus representation and there is a magical sea themed wedding at one point in the book as well. But adults should be aware that grief and death are mentioned and one character talks about a relative who has taken their own life, though this isn't discussed or described in any way. Most importantly, this is a book about magical adventure which is engaging and thrilling with wonderful characters and some much needed disability representation. So I look forward to more by this author, Lizette Orton. If you like this review, well, why not consider subscribing if you're not already? And you can check out, I've got a middle grade playlist and a picture book playlist, and I'll link those in the description box below so you can check out some other reviews of fantastic children's books. Hopefully I'll see you again here soon. Bye.